Welcome to today's lesson. We are going to look at SI units and symbols. We start by defining the term measurement and this one refers to the process of finding the size of a physical quantity. Area scientists were using different units according to where they came from and this brought a lot of confusion. So they, they came up with one international system that, was, that is supposed to be used worldwide. And this one we call it SI unit for physical quantities. The reason for establishing this was one, to, uh, to, to have international uniformity among scientists and to avoid confusion among scientists. We have two types of physical quantities. One, we have basic physical quantities or what we call fundamental physical quantities. And these are quantities that are measured using measuring instrument. You cannot obtain them from any other quantities. So you have to measure them. We have examples. There are seven of them that are tabulated on this table. We have length. And if you look at this table, the first column is giving us basic physical quantity. The second column is giving us the SI unit. And then we have the symbol of the SI unit. For instance, we have length. The SI unit is meter. The symbol is small m. So these are the seven basic physical quantity or what we are calling fundamental quantities. These are the ones that we are saying they have to be measured. You can't calculate them. You, need, you can't obtain them from any other physical quantity. So what I want to emphasize on this is that when you are writing the SI unit, make sure that you write it correctly. And the symbols. If, for instance, you are talking of electric currents, the SI unit is ampere, then the symbol should be capital A. Because if you write small a, then that one is considered as wrong SI unit. And when you write wrong SI unit, there is always a penalty. You are penalized. For instance, again, if you look at mass, the SI unit is kilogram. The symbol is small k and small g. If you write a capital K or a capital G, that is a different thing. So make sure that you are able to memorize. You can use a song to remember. You can, do, you can make your own song to remember all these units and ensure that you are writing the correct symbols. Once again, I'm saying, if you write the wrong symbol, you are penalized. Then we move to derived physical quantities. And this one, as the term suggests, they are derived from other physical quantities through multiplication or division. You can have area. For instance, if you take area of a circle, you always multiply radius times pi uh, times radius radius is length as we are going to see it is a basic physical quantity so you are deriving area from length we have volume the same you are deriving vol volume from the length which is a basic physical quantity so derived quantities are obtained either through multiplication or division of those seven basic physical quantities we have other examples we have work density momentum force pressure and many others then we move to the assignment if you look at our first question here you are supposed to feed the table i know you may be tempted to go back to your notes and just fill but remember at the beginning i told you to evaluate yourself using the quizzes that are provided it's always to test whether there is knowledge retention in your mind so make sure that the answers are coming from your mind revise well before you attempt the assignment we have for the calculations you can be able to calculate and write the the correct si units so attempt the assignment and make sure that you are able to get the correct answer Thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.